Oh, Brie Bella's gonna kill us all. Oh, it might happen, man. <laughs> oh, there she goes. Oh my goodness, yes, no, no. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I'm Jared, by the way. I'm Josh. Good to be here, brother. Thank you. Yeah, man, man. <laughs> That's good. It's Oktoberfest. When the whole NFL and WWE ring ropes the month where they all go pink, I think it's cool, but I like the Oktoberfest. And, you know, that's what I look forward to. Uh, so, and the, my, my story that I've got for this week, all, yeah. all I have prepared, get my notes and my glasses. <laughs> was, that reminded uh, me of something. <laughs> for, the, for the first time since uh, the remodel of uh, the Variety Playhouse and Little Five Points, I got to go and check it out. I think it's been remodeled for well over a year now, but I, I, I ain't been there. I, man, yeah, I, I just was kind of curious to see what it looked like because uh, you know, talk about a, a, it was a toilet of a building at one time, and it is really, really nice now. That's awesome, man. But uh, a shout out to my cousin John, uh, hooked us up with tickets. Uh, and he's That's one of those great. If you're watching, man, here's to you. One, he was one of those cousins, one of those guys that always had that. Have you heard this hottest CD? Well, I had it three weeks ago. Uh, but let me tell you about these guys. And really, you know, was always there to hook you up with good music and stuff like that. We went to see uh, the drive by truckers. And uh, it was one of those shows that got, I've been, one of those bands and one of those shows I've been meaning to go to, it feels like for years now. And it was always, uh, something would come up, had to go do this, couldn't go, is that another thing? And I'd never seen them. And, uh, one of the reasons I think I've never seen them is I always get them confused with driving and crying. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go see that. But <laughs> I drive by truckers are like driving and crying. I mean, are, are fine, but not anything that I have to go you see gotta live. Go see, I got you, brother. Uh, but to be fair, I always think, well, why do you want to go see them? <laughs> but uh, one of the things that happened with the show was we get there, we're just kind of chilling out, you know, uh, in front of the venue. Uh, for a minute and you kind of look up at the poster and you see the photos of the guys all looking uh, to the left and to the right in the in black and white and it's <laughs> drive-by truckers and the name Ad um, <laughs> Adams in the name yes. Adams House <laughs> oh, yes <laughs> was we're, we're rock and roll band <laughs> it's the drive-by truckers that opening up it's Adams House Cat like, and when you go to a venue like the Masquerade, if it's still there, I don't know if it is. Uh, Variety Playhouse uh, shows the t t Terminal West. Usually, the opening yeah. act, you know, I probably never get, never have heard of them, so I'll find out when I get there. And that's kind of what happened. And luckily, I got the lowdown before we actually went in, and I saw them walk out, kind of like those guys look kind of familiar. Rock and roll band. <laughs> but, uh, the, this, the story of Adam's House Cat is that the original lineup of drive-by truckers performed under the name Adam's House Cat. Uh, there was a recording of an album that was recorded and just lost. Uh, one of those weird things that happened even back in the day and it's been found. It's been uncovered and now it's been released and they started a series of shows opening as Adam's House Cat and coming out and doing a set as a drive-by truckers. And I got to thinking about it, these guys aren't spring chickens anymore. And that, that would be hard on anybody. I think you 2 did it on one show as uh, the country jamboree band, whatever they call themselves, opened up for you 2 uh, which Because Bono wanted two paychecks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need an opening band. I can do it myself. I'll do it myself. And, uh, but even... On, on that level, for sure, but that's got to be hard to do. Uh, but they did a, I think they started in, I want to say Knoxville and came down here, so I don't think they're going to do it very long, but it's, it felt kind of neat to see. The, the B, they did Friday and Saturday night here in Atlanta. It's kind of neat to be in that crowd so I can, so I can say I saw it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it, even the, the drive by truckers lineup, there's not much of their uh, catalog that I could, you know, tell you exactly, you know, but I, I, but if, if they come to your town, go check them out. They're really good and uh, they're fun to go see. And it was just, it, it was just a, a neat show to go check out. And I uh, had some fun stuff going. 
we we got there, got in, and uh, it's Little Five Points is one of those kind of artsy fartsy midtown kind of uh, parts of town, and I just, I just knew it going in. So like, be careful when you're ordering something that you've seen. Well, this is simple. How how hard can it be? Uh, and, it, and, it, and I think it's good because in, in the venue there's like this, uh, uh, they, they have your bar. If you want to go to the bar, you can get your drinks and just have that. But then there's also people go, they kind of, it's kind of tough if you're going to a show to go get food there, you know, because a lot of the restaurants there get packed and stay packed. So it's tough to get in and out if you got a deadline. So they had like barbecue sandwich place yeah. in the front. And I thought that's, that's a neat idea. Yeah, man. It was, it was awesome, it was very good. But you go in there and you think, okay, I got, anytime there's like a brisket sandwich on the menu, I gotta try that, mm -hmm. gotta find out. And so, so I, I got that, and you're thinking, then there's some like other sides on the menu, you're kinda like, you know, barbecue sandwich, coleslaw, why not, give, give me that. And of course, <laughs> you know, you get it, and I, I forgot where I am. It's not just gonna be uh, your run of the mill, go get you two ice cream scoops of coleslaw. It's gonna be some artsy farsy crap. Oh, I forgot. It's basically a salad. A salad, yeah, <laughs> for real. But, but, it, but it's called coleslaw. Enjoy your coleslaw. <laughs> there you go, I'm, I'm from Little Five. I knew, I knew who Adam's house cat was before you even got here. For real, it's amazing. <laughs> I euthanized Adam's house cat. So, but it's, 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 you know, that's 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 what you're getting yourself into. But uh, I was sitting there eating my salad, coleslaw. I just I was thinking, well, thank God I didn't get the potato salad because it probably just would have been a raw potato. <laughs> it's, it's a pot <laughs> just a potato stuck in a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> Enjoy that salad. A little I have this. It's it's strange. Little Five is a strange <laughs> place. Um, the people that live there are great. The people that work there are very fifty fifty. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's exactly what you're talking about. It's either exactly what you're describing. Or the total opposite. Yeah, and it's just it's cool. I, I, it's I like I like both. I mean, it, it's it was oh, it balances work, right out. It's cool. Yeah, yeah it, it's a fun place. It's been forever since I went though. It's, you mm -hmm. mentioned like the Friday Playhouse, man. I think the last time that I went was to go there. Yeah, and it was to see um, the Musical Box, man. It's this Genesis tribute band that literally bought the old props. I mean, they like it's not them just playing the tunes. They literally like recreate particular set list, and it's like. Hey guys, it's like October 26th, 1974. They play yeah. the set list all the way through and they like recreate. It's, it's nuts. It was, oh my God, musical box, man. They are incredible. If you like, when I say Genesis, I mean like Peter Gabriel Genesis and like <clears throat> I discuss progressive rock because I'm a huge nerd with people all the time. And, um, if your idea of prog rock is yes, it might not be your thing, but if you like real progressive rock and roll, it's fantastic. It's weird though, you mentioned the spot and I'm like, man, we gotta like, let's, I just, I liked your list of different venues in Atlanta. I'm like, man, we gotta go, we gotta name the venues yeah. in Atlanta and our favorite show that we saw there. Yeah. Variety Playhouse would definitely be Musical Box. I saw them twice because I'm, again, I like that stuff and they were, they were awesome. I think it's interesting, the first time I saw them, they played Lamb Lies Down on Broadway from start to finish. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And the second set was some of the bigger stuff like Supper's Ready and, you know, Musical yeah. Box. And um, the second show was, again, it was a particular tour they were recreating. So it was a lot, it was more different stuff, man. But it, it was freaking awesome. I apologize because I'm a prick and I jumped all over your story. I'm sorry. And that, that's, uh, that's just kind of talking about the venue just made me think of what's, it's so much better, especially uh, now that, uh, the way it was set up, you have the Variety Playhouse is a, it's longer than it is wide. It, it looks like an old movie theater. Yeah, it's a good description. And uh, I, I, it may have been because in you had the floor, which was long, kind of uh, theater style seats in the middle and kind of stuff on the side. Well, the stuff on the side now is all kind of like uh, cemented up to where it's just like a ramp to where there's standing room little sections like three of them down the side and there's still some of the theater seating in the middle but it looks like they probably could do better to take that out and have it all standing room but when you go to see a band like the drive-by truckers and one of the things that my cousin well I shouldn't say I'll, I'll, 
I won't throw him under the bus, even though it just did. <laughs> but we're standing there, we're kind of looking around, kind of like, man, there's some, a lot of gray hairs in this crowd. That's why you have to still have the seat in there, is because bands like that are going to play there. I need a place to sit down. I'm old. I've come to see this band. You know, they're, they're going to bring out some of those people. Well, they, they weren't all uh, 20-somethings in that crowd. But, <laughs> so, and, but, and, and the reason why I say that is because I was one of the dummies that said, I can stand. I'll, I'll get in one of the little spots on the side and like midway through the, 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 the second set of the drive-by truck. <laughs> it was kind of like, oh man, one of those seats would be awesome. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> but, threw somebody out of it and took it. <laughs> and then in, in the Variety Playhouse, there's a, there a second level that was what made me think it was a movie theater. Was For a long time, there was like this cement wall that was really hard to see over if you sat up there. Because they would have some seats up there that just didn't seem, it wasn't the most convenient place to sit. You, when you went up there, I think it was pretty much just like plastic lawn chair wasn't really a theater style folded seats you had that going for you and you had to kind of do this number over the the wall all night well that wall's gone sweet so at, at the very least it's uh, a place there's like a rail but it's not a cement wall so that's a lot better and I didn't go up to the top but it looked like there was more of a slant to the seat so not only are you was there a wall there, it felt like you were kind of all on the same level, so not only you have to look over a wall, you don't have anything helping you kind of see over the guy in front of you. Uh, so, it's way, way, way better being you, it felt a lot, it, it felt a lot better in there because it had this huge ceiling fan that had yeah. n no need to be that big other than the fact that it kept it feeling breezy in there yeah. all night, so I couldn't complain about that. It looks like a jet engine. Oh yeah, yeah. that thing is cool, man. Yeah, man, I, I took a picture of it, like, why is it gonna be so big? Yeah. But, because, but I just look at it like that thing breaks loose. We're we're, we're, we're goners, all, man. Yeah, that, we're this goners. Whole bottom section just gone. Yeah, that sucker's cool, man. So, probably, uh, probably one of the, some of the coolest bartenders you're gonna find it might be the Variety Playhouse. The, the, the Vortex is cool, uh, but you know it's it's a different clientele there. That it's cool people at the Variety, and they had an awesome little drink that they kind of made up. I guess they probably do this and just rename it for every show, but. I didn't know that because they know people ain't gonna come to every show. Uh, it's called the uh, box, the boxcar bomb, or the driver bomb, or whatever driver or something. And essentially, what it was is uh, it was is it Sloan Irish whiskey or Slan? I, it, it was it was it was a new one. I'd never seen it before. I was like, just something about it, just like. Not Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hearing the hearing what was in it was kind of like it, its beauty is in its simplicity. I must have that. And then seeing the guy pour it, and the, the bottle was in the, I want to say Sloan Irish whiskey and ginger beer. Was it? That was it. That's why I was in the drinking. He he put some like a little might have tapped some like a little spice in there because. Put some coleslaw in it. Yeah, more coleslaw. <laughs> Garnished it with coleslaw. That's all you say from your coleslaw, brother. That's right, brother. <laughs> you know, you know, now. Work the drive. <laughs> and you, 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 you hear a, a drink order like that, and you're kind of like, man, this guy must be, he, he might not be all together with us. He might be a little slow, but, man, it was good. It was one of those kind of drinks you're like, oh, man, I don't need to go get three more of those, but I could. I yeah, uh, just it, it, it had the, the ginger beer had the spice that you need and that uh, and I wish I could give a glowing endorsement of how great Sloan Irish whiskey was. It could have been uh, flipping uh, Jack Daniels for all I care. It, it tasted the same to me, but it, what well, I wasn't ready for those two two great tastes to taste that great together. Uh, and it, it was it was wait it was one of those kind of drink orders that you thought man why didn't I think of this and whoever did I want to give them a high five, high five. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I want to give them a hug I want to, I want to, I want to be able to go back there and say hey put down that coleslaw give me a <laughs> <laughs> so, had had a one of those good old times at the when you when you rock and roll shows hey, uh, go and checking that out the other night so that that was fun that's and, awesome man. Uh, The sh first time I ever went there, 
had to be uh, Henry Rollins show. I, me too. I think that's the first time. I mean, I've walked past it a thousand times. Yeah. Cause Little Five is just the neighborhood. You walk around, you go to the shops, yeah. and so you see these places. Everybody lay their own drawers. Yeah, man. It's it's all down there. It's yeah. cool. It's it's a cool spot, man. Um, that uh, it's my favorite place down there is the uh, Brew House. Mm -hmm. The Brew House is an Arsenal bar, and uh, it's very very cool. Back in the day, before every house in America had soccer games, you could go down there and yeah. watch them. And it's crazy because you know living where we live, you got to leave the house at six in the morning to get there. But it was fun. I've done that like it was um, <clears throat> this was several years ago. But I went and watched Man United Liverpool. That was a blast because the place was completely divided. It was very full and it was totally divided and all of us were really loud and really into it and it was very cool. And then another time I went and watched United. And that was quite a, it was, it's just, it's a cool place, but that's just one place. But that's like, um, yeah, variety play. That has to be the first time I've ever been inside there was the yeah. Rollins Spoken Word Show. I totally agree. And uh, there was some play I saw there, but it was fucking. A school trip. I don't really count that. It was, it was, it was the, the the only live production I've ever seen of Man of La Mancha. Yeah, was there. Awesome. Was, uh, uh, su sounds lame, but surprisingly fun to go and sit and see. Uh, don't remember much about it. Just remember that you know that, that I saw it, <laughs> and uh, then that was the the night of a thousand Serena riders that she still owes me my money. Yeah, for real man <laughs> was a. Uh, at uh, Variety Playhouse, and the story of that was, you know, Serena Ryder was one of those uh, ladies. That, it's not to say that she came and went. She's still out there making good music and kind of stealing money from people, but <laughs> <And> avoiding Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but she had this awesome song a few years ago, uh, uh, a little bit of red, uh, all for love, uh, something else I'm forgetting. I think Black is the Light was the name of the song. Something like that. Uh, but her name pops up on uh, the, the the tour list coming through Atlanta. And it was one of the times when I think she was actually would have been considered the opener. Uh, it was her and Howie Day. This is back like the MySpace days. That is how far back this goes. And uh, I, I think what happened is... She signed on for that tour, and her album blew up. And I was kind of like, I've got to leave. And we get there, and don't that's not announced to anybody. Nobody knew until we're there. And there's nothing you can do about it. But it's like, I mean, it's like now you can get refunds on a ticket anyway. It's just kind of like that, that stuff happens. But just the fact that... I think she has been back to town since then. I was just too pissed to go. But you owe me ten bucks, <laughs> whatever it was. It wasn't much, not, not enough to worry about being like. But it was the time, and so I was like. But at the same time, it was it was a fun night. Uh, to go and chill out and <laughs> get not quite the show you came to see, but whatever. And I it was. And this was a time when Howie Day had. Long cooled off. The Collide song was his big song. It was a minute after that had been out. So it's kind of those kind of things like, you know, maybe it was set up to fail. But honestly enough, there was the guy that, and I, and, and I do remember who got replaced was there was a dude, talking about back in the Matt, in the MySpace days, a guy named uh, Matt Nathanson, who had it. I wish I could tell you the name of the song, but but it was damn good. I remember it being really popular, and, and that's who was the replacement. So it's not like you just got some scrub out there. But uh, one of these days, I'll get my Serena Ryder show, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be her and probably Robin, and that's going to be a, a unusual pairing. But putting it out but it there, would work. putting was, it out there, and willing it. To I, want, I wanted to see it happen. Yeah. Um, man, I'm I'm just keep I'm stuck on venues now, man, because I really totally. do. I like the discussion of like. Where have you been, and who'd you see, and um, I don't know why that, that just popped in my no, head. Yeah, but man. I just I'm so ready for the 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 Robin album is like out, and there's not a tour. It's the, all the tour dates that are announced aren't in this country yet. But the only time she came on the last tour was like she was opening for like Katy Perry. I had no problem with going to see Katy Perry, but that's. At that time, that was a hard ticket to get. Yeah, seriously. It's very expensive like, if you can get it, and, and then it's then, brutal on top. Talking about venues. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, 
if they play at Phillips Arena, that's fine. I, I can come across with yeah, a ticket there. You, but you can get in there. This was Gwinnett Infinite Energy. Different. It's like it's, Phillips, but yeah. a quarter. I would say a quarter. It's not quite half. You ain't going to fit half, but a little bit more than a quarter of what you can get in Phillips. So a lot harder to, you know, scrape a one guy solo ticket when everybody's wanting to take their daughter and their 47 friends to that show. So I, I, I will have my redemption on seeing, seeing that show. Right, I, that's going to happen, man. Yeah, and I think, I'm looking forward to that. Heck yeah, man. If, if there's one thing, probably be the summer when that happens, but yeah. I just got that. It's not even announced, and I'm already like, I can't wait for that. I gotta go. 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 <laughs> Man, all right. Let's start with the big one. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Phillips is hard, man, because I've seen some. Well, we've seen some really good shows there. It'd be Heck difficult yeah. to pick. I, it's it's almost impossible. Uh, I saw you two there, and yes, I'm a nerd. I went and saw you two, but they were great. <laughs> That's a, that's another. It's talk about playing that at Gwinnett. The last time they came through town, that's where they played. Like, y'all, I, I can't go there. Seriously, it's, man. It's, it's already pricey to begin with. Then you're gonna cut down the type of amount of people that can go. It's like, For that's, real. It's not, y'all killing it's not me. Fair. It's not fair. <laughs> it, it, it would either be them or Bruce, because Bruce was. Bruce, oh, we yeah. saw together. Billy Joel, yeah. we saw together. Billy was amazing too. That was an incredibly good show. I think. Well. Bruce too, but especially Billy's one of those dudes that I think people kind of, you know, don't give the credit for being just that. that that's going to be a rock show. Yeah, if you go. yeah, like how good he is live. You're, yeah. you're totally right. It's like, man, that's a, what you hear on the record is what you hear. He's mm -hmm. good, man. So that was super fun. One of the things that always stands out in my mind uh, that is the, the first and only time I've seen a Billy Joel show, and I was, but maybe I'd said it out loud. But I was, we went to the show and we're there, and I'm just kind of like, what, what would Billy Joel, with all the songs he had to choose from, what would, you, what would he open with? And there's this guy in front of us, I think he kind of like heard us like, oh, let me, let me impart some knowledge, let me school some noobs <laughs> sitting behind me, and he was like, see, and and, and I think you know he asked me, he asked me the question because I was thinking about it, like, what do you think he's gonna open with? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, you, one, one of the rock ones, kind of like, you know, uh, I don't remember what I answered, but it, it was, I, I was wrong. And uh, he opens with uh, Angry Young Man. Yeah, man. That's this version that you ain't ready for. It's just like, the, the, when you hear it on, I, I'm always impressed by those people that you hear it on the record and then they can actually do it. You're kind of like, whoa, that was, that was good. Uh, and comes out and does it, and then he pulls like his original ticket stuff out of his wallet like a top loader or something from like 70 something or maybe early 80 something it's like I was like okay you're you're a real deal uh, so that so that was what that was one of the things that stands out about that show in my head and that's kind of one of those stories of you know uh, but yeah go, go go see that show if it comes through it's yeah, definitely worth it going to see that's cool man I like that one um, mm -hmm. And Springsteen's too busy doing his Broadway show now that they, they ever come off of that. But yeah. if if that tours, I would love to see it. But if odds are, if it plays someplace like the Fox, kind of like, now we've got that problem again. But everybody can't go. Yeah, man, know. that's uh, the the show that came through town recently. And honestly, I don't know where. I honestly don't remember where they played because mm -hmm. it just stunk. Because I got the email about, hey man, it's coming. Because I had like an alert for it. And I don't remember what I was doing that night, but I was like engaged and I couldn't go. But uh, Questlove's For You, the orchestral Prince show, I, was, I wanted to go see that so bad. And then it that just... Have been the, either the Fox or the Tabernacle one, something like that. I, I honestly do not remember, but uh, it was cool. And it was like, oh man, I hate they're only doing this one night. But mm -hmm. anyway, it was that, that would have been cool. I liked seeing that. Oh man, all right, so we've done... Excuse me. This is just cool. We like discussed before we started. We have nothing to talk about, so it's like oh, this is kind of a cool subject, man. Like shows you've seen, and like the one of the the, the landmark. I mean, we talk about Phillips Arena yeah, shows yeah. that I got to see there was. Uh, I always said, uh, if Dave Matthews ever comes and plays an indoor show anywhere in town, that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. And I had. Uh, 
Yeah, I think that, that that was the first time I saw him. I was trying to think, well, did I see him somewhere else first? Like, no, but that, that was the first time. I've seen him since then, but uh, he played at Phillips. And it was one of those kind of nights, uh, like I got off work, it was back in the days when I got off at like a reasonable time, we could go do this, but, uh, and rode down there without a ticket. In my hand, myself and uh, shout out to Ben Miller. Uh, we rode down there. What's up, Ben? And said, let's, let's go see what happens. And uh, met up with some dude on the steps. And it was one of those kind of things like I didn't, hadn't done this before, hadn't done it since because I, I, I got had such a good experience. First time I ever bought off a scalper. I don't want to chance it again. And I think I basically stole these tickets from this guy, what it felt like. I think I got them. You, you, you never hear these stories of getting tickets either at or under face value, but it was getting close to like 20 minutes before showtime. We're standing outside uh, Phillips and this dude's kind of like got some tickets to sell. And before he could say a price, I was like, I've got $80. And he's like, sold. And I, well, I think we, <laughs> I didn't want to volunteer a dollar amount for Ben, but you know, I think he was, he was kind of cool with that price too. It's kind of like, cause I'm thinking like odds are it's going to be at least a hundred to get in. So I'm thinking I'll start it, start at that and see if it happens. And he took it. So I was like, well, let's see what happens and yeah, get in there. And I'm thinking, okay, these are probably going to be at the top of the place, I'm thinking eighty dollar ticket, and I walk down. I'm on like the lower level. Yeah, man. And uh, one of the things that stands out about that show, just well, first of all, how good it was, and it was sometime in December. But uh, it's still, it's, it's like when you get the, one of the one of the first times I saw Bruce Springsteen was in December, and everybody that was talking on the internet was like, I was getting close to that time. You're like. When's the night he's going to do Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Uh, is it going to be this night in Atlanta? No, we didn't get it. I think it was like the next night. <laughs> but uh, when, when, went to see Dave Matthews at Phillips Arena. I'm sitting lower level, sweet, awesome view, good seats. And they do the Christmas song. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily a Christmas uh you want a holiday song, but nonetheless, in December, and I'm thinking, what are the odds that they do this? Probably not very good, but it's one of my favorite songs of theirs. So I'm like, probably not going to hear this one. And then they go into it, and you're kind of like, it was, it was one of those kind of serendipitous, I was supposed to be here this yeah, night man. kind of, kind of moments. Uh, and above all of them, uh, talking about <laughs> the first farewell tour is a. Uh, we, we might have, I don't know if we got into this, uh, talking about shows before or not, but uh, talking, uh, went, uh, went to see Kiss there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that that was that was hella tight, so. Yeah, that was my favorite. I've seen Kiss three times. That mm -hmm. was my favorite one. Yeah, uh, man. I really, I dug the crap out of that show, man. Heck yeah. I got to piggyback on a couple of things real quick. Um, cool. I went up and shot right out of my head, so it's all good. If it comes back, that's okay. But the big one was. We, we, saw, we saw Bruce there. We did. That's actually one of the stories that I wanted to tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did think of what the other one was. It's a. This is not a. This is a sporting event. But we're talking about like scalper stories, and the man oh, was yeah, there, yeah, so yeah. he lived this with me. So I will tell you one of our stories, man. We, um, literally after work, just like you said, for work one day, mm -hmm. man, drove down to Atlanta on a Saturday. And it was uh, Georgia Tech and Jacksonville State. And the, yeah, the reason man. I wanted to go was because it was Paul Johnson's first ever game at Tech. And nobody yeah. believes this story, but it's a great story. And the man was there, so he could back me up, man. It we're happened. walking, we're walking up and down Bobby Dodway, doing this number right here. Yeah. And this group of four kids comes up. And <clears throat> if you don't know anything about like the student population at Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech is a ridiculously well thought of school. There's mm -hmm. there's kids from Georgia. There's plenty of kids from Georgia there, but it is not a majority at all. Mm -hmm. Kids come from everywhere, including the globe, yeah. to go there. And I I swear to God I don't remember, but I've got Kansas stuck in my head. I'm pretty sure these four kids were from Kansas. I know they were from a different state. Yeah. And that was the conversation that we had. Was uh, and it was just we just got talking a lot of times. Like man, you need a couple. Of, I just need two. 
And they're like, you know, we're not going to go anyway. So they literally gave us the tickets. But what the conversation was about was that they were new. They'd just been just gotten in town not mm -hmm. very long. Because, again, this is the fall. This school year hadn't even started yet. And they hadn't been to the varsity yet. Oh, so geez, that was yeah. literally our trade was we like gave them like I think 40 bucks to go yeah. to the varsity and it's like here man just here go and you, go you can eat hearty yes and good. it's like knock yourself out man because I totally yeah. I mean 20 bucks a ticket is nothing I would have oh. done that anyway it's exactly what you were saying yeah. about throwing down 80 it's mm -hmm. like man that's that was the logic yeah. so that was the deal is we sent these kids to the varsity for the first time maybe I don't know they might have turned it into beer and had a great party that, that night. Too. Do your thing, man. But that was so cool. And then what happened was, you know, the thing is, this is this is the serendipitous thing. <clears throat> Got very lucky because with it being Jacksonville State, first game of the season. They are student tickets. I've still got the thing. I've still mm -hmm. got my ticket stub, man. And it's just like super that. basic Georgia Tech, Jacksonville State. You are yeah. going to the student section. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to show a student ID to yeah, use those tickets. Yeah, I remember getting those things and being like, this isn't going to work. Yeah. And it's all <laughs> like, hey, man. So I go up and the lady is all like, need to see your ID. And I'm like, man, I left it in my room. Oh, and she man. just gave me this look. And she knew I was lying, but she was incredibly sweet. And it was just like. She was so cool yeah. about it. It, it, it. She could not have been cooler about it because she knew that I was not telling the truth, and she didn't yeah. care. She was very, very sweet and let us in. I've, I've, I've very few, very few times in my life that I do not have a lie prepared just in case. Oh, yeah. Just in case I need it. Oh, yeah. And I think we both had that kind of thing. And it being the home opener, it may have been the – the season of it was yeah it's his first uh, ever game as the head coach man you're it, right that, 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 that was a very easy sell yeah like, oh man i need that yeah she was super cool and, and and man you take one look at me you kind of tell like you don't go here you never will go here you're, you're <laughs> never gonna go here uh what's three by nine oh uh, what <laughs> go ahead <laughs> that's the most basic math question in the world and i can't answer it it's just like yeah, okay <laughs> But it was cool, man. We hung out and we watched Tech and Jacksonville State. And I think the kids in the seats next to us, I'm pretty sure, I'm getting my places all mixed up. I'm pretty sure, I know we got the tickets from, I know it was the Midwest. I could almost swear to you it was Kansas. Because for some reason, being at Georgia Tech, the reason I have that association is being at Georgia Tech, it's ACC country, which is basketball country. And I just, for some reason, I have the Kansas Jayhawks stuck in my head because, man, talking about basketball country. And for some reason, I just made that association. So those guys, I'm pretty sure, were from Kansas. The kids next to us are neighbors who really were students at Tech. I'm pretty sure were from Pakistan. I think that's where the kid I was talking to told me they were from. And it was awesome because they were literally like, just they wanted they had no idea what was going on except that, oh, our team's playing? Cool, we're there. We're totally yeah. there. And they were like super into it and literally. I think asked three questions the whole game and then understood the crap better than I do. I mean, it was like by halftime, they were, they knew, they knew it was up. Like, this is awesome, man. So it was, it was quite a bit of fun. They've been to Bobby Dodd a thousand times. That was a very fun story. It was, it was cool. I love that. My favorite Bobby Dodd game actually was my first Atlanta United game. Not going to lie. It's very weird to have my favorite moment at that stadium not be Georgia Tech. But that was a blast. DC yeah. United tanned us that day. We got killed, but it didn't matter. <laughs> that's, that's still my favorite memory of going to that stadium. So I apologize for that. The other story, another us story, talking about like serendipitous things with Bruce. Mm -hmm. The reason you didn't get Santa Claus is coming to town is because we literally got the first show without Clarence. That that did happen. Holy crap! It went down. If you, it's on YouTube, man. It's on this here, this very YouTube. I'm gonna rip you <laughs> off. This very YouTube, man. Type in uh, 10th Avenue Freeze Out. Phillips Arena, oh, it's, it's it'll come sad. up. Yeah, when they get to changes made up town, I'm mm -hmm. telling you that place, it's it's incredible. It's like Edge being announced for the Royal Rumble. I, I couldn't believe it. Chill, like chills. It, well, yeah, just thinking about it, I, yeah. I'm telling you, it's one of the coolest things I've ever been in the building for. It was awesome. Nice. One, get what? Just going going to shows. One of those last minute kind of things. Like, yeah, drug my feet about getting tickets. Got terrible seats. But being there was the thing. It's interesting. The seats are very interesting, especially if you go and watch the 10th Avenue Freeze Out video. Because mm -hmm. we were, you know, it's very rare that people sell seats behind the stage. Bruce does. They're mm -hmm. upstairs, so you're looking down and you're looking at everybody's butts yeah. and backs all night. So yeah. basically, our view of the show was pretty much the cover of Born in the USA. Yeah. We're looking at Bruce's ass <laughs> all, all night. All night. <laughs> but when they do the tribute to Clarence... <laughs> It's literally right in front of us. Yeah. I mean, we were right there. So it's like, I mean, I can't imagine how cool it was for anybody else. But uh, I know how cool it was for us, man. Seeing uh, 
I got to see the Rising Tour. Yes, sir. At uh, Phillips Arena, and it's it's one of those kind of talk about th things that I'll never forget. Uh -huh. Is uh, they had the stage set up where it was the stage, and at the back of the stage a ramp came up, so it was kind of like they emerged and were just there, kind of like whoa, kind of neat, but. As they did that, a silhouette would come. So they didn't just like appear out of nowhere. You kind of saw them coming. And when you saw this big, the, like the purple light hit, and it was like Grimace with a top hat coming out. You're kind of like, I know who that That's is. That's him, buddy. <laughs> Man, that place just lit up. And uh, yes, top, one of those moments you like, you never forget yeah, kind man. of thing. And just and seeing, and seeing that show, uh, Oddly enough, never I never thought seeing them again that I would hear those songs again. I wouldn't hear uh, "Waiting on a Lonely Day" and "The, the Rise," and I, I didn't think they would play them. And then they play them the night we saw. I was like, "Oh, thank God!" Because that's some of my favorite, some of my favorites uh, stuff that he does with those two songs back to back. And usually, if you do one, you usually got to do the other. Yeah, man. Uh, so that. That, that that was a that was a good night. Heck yeah, man! It was uh, the boss. That's the only time I've seen him. And it's one of those things you just build up and build up, and then we mm -hmm. went. And it was like I couldn't believe it. It was yeah. awesome. One of my other great Phillips Arena checklist or, or box tickers is a uh, when Pearl Jam decided they were going to release all their live stuff. They had like the Monkey Man albums were this. Yeah, this is the great show. And the Phillips Arena show that I went to was actually picked. And I'm telling you, that show was not that good. Eddie sounded great, but the show wasn't great. It was it was fine. I think it's the second time I'd seen him. I saw him at Lakewood once. Saw him at Phillips Arena. It's okay. It just wasn't great. But the reason I actually went. Um, it was the binaural tour, and there's mm -hmm. a song on binaural called Slide of Hand that is my favorite Pearl Jam song ever, and they did not play it much on that tour, and it was just a, well, maybe, maybe they'll play it, and they didn't, and that's okay, but in hopes that they would play Slide of Hand, and the fact that Sonic Youth opened for them, and I am a Sonic Youth, youth fanatic, so I'm like, yeah. that's going to be worth going just to say you saw them, mm -hmm. and I saw them, and it wasn't great, because Sonic Youth is much more of a small venue kind of band. But it was them, yeah. and it was awesome, and it's before they broke up. I mean, it was mm -hmm. Kim and Lee and Thurston and Steve. I mean, it was it was them, and I'm like, this is freaking awesome. I could not believe I was in the same room. It's pretty far off, but I couldn't believe I was in the same room as Sonic Youth. This is yeah. awesome. So it was the uh, New York City Ghost and Flowers was the album they were touring behind, and Pearl Jam was behind by Gnarl, and it was it was cool, man. But it's nowhere. I, <laughs> It's tough. Between you two and the boss, it's one of those two. But it would be very, very hard to choose between them. I think that Bruce played better tunes, just for what that's worth. That's I mean, cool. it's like the boss was just, God dang, that was fun. Yeah, man. But uh, I think Bruce gets that kind of uh, reputation of being one of those kind of shows you go see and you get two hours in, and you're kind of like, Please stop. <laughs> yeah, man, they, uh, they'll punish you. Yeah, <laughs> they'll I've, punish you for showing up. <laughs> but, uh, I, but I've, I've heard those stories, and then every time I've seen them, I, I never felt that. I never felt yeah. like, oh, God, when are they going to stop? But uh, I could see, you know, some of the stories that you hear, like them playing three and a half and four hours. I, I, could, I could get that, but especially you get, hey, look, I got stuff to do tomorrow morning. Man, <laughs> the only show I've ever been to that went like that is um, – it's a, we'll get to the um, to Gwinnett now because mm -hmm. I've only ever seen one show at Gwinnett and it was Nine Inch Nails and it's with no competition whatsoever the best show I've ever seen in my life it was oh, incredible yeah. Yeah. and I think they played for about three forty five that show is yeah. famous man I mean the, the Gwinnett show mm -hmm. from the it's there really is no tour because I think I've mentioned this before but it was a long show way back in the the earlier days so I'll mention it again they had released Year Zero and then gone to Europe. And in the course of touring Europe and then coming back, I don't know if it went to South America or if they just started on the West Coast. I'm really, I really don't remember what the itinerary was. But in the process, for going to the European tour and having released Year Zero, they then put the two albums out online. You had the Ghost album, which was the instrumentals, and you had um, the Slip, which was the free one. Excuse me, they just gave away. So by the time they came to Atlanta, they had three new albums that they were basically touring behind. 
But on top of that, Robin Fink, the gigantic Frankenstein-looking guitar player that is on again, off again, but at the time was on again, mm -hmm. is from like Roswell. So it's the hometown oh, yeah. show. And it was just, it's, it was, God dang, they were awesome. And it was just really, really cool to play. I mean, they, they did things off the Ghost album, which I couldn't believe. So they literally just rolled this almost like orchestral, it, not orchestral is not the right word, but it looked like this gigantic, um, oh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, man, like a percussion pit for everybody. It was, it was crazy. It was so good. But that show from that tour is very, very, very famous because they just kept playing and it was, yeah. you could just tell it was oh so much fun man yeah. and as far as it being robin's hometown show they basically let robin call the number and they played reptile which is a very cool song and uh, apparently that was the one he wanted to play but holy crap it was it was incredible man i just i can't believe how good that show was and there's, there's a dvd of it they did like a free dvd you can get like this nine disc version and i did not move fast enough to get that one but i got the single and okay. i'm cool with it because it's very similar and Holy crap. Anyhow, that's that's my favorite show ever. I couldn't believe how good that was. And they were actually in town just a couple of days ago. They were at the yeah, Fox. I and they, I'm played like, like, they played like two nights. I, I think yeah. so. And, that, that, and that's typical for the Fox. It's it's not a huge place, but yeah. damn, it sounds good. And, oh, and no you, kidding. Yeah, that, that that's the place to see somebody, but not everybody can play there because yeah. it's just it's not, not, a, not you can't fit 20,000 people in there. Yeah, I know we've discussed the Fox before. Like the best mm -hmm. thing we've seen there, the concert, the best concert I've seen there was Sarah McLaughlin. Cool. That was the surfacing tour. I like, I like noting what tours they were. Oh, I didn't say it about Bruce, but like you mentioned the Rising, and when we saw him, it was, was Wrecking Ball. Ball. Yeah, yeah, when we saw him, it was Wrecking Ball. So. And, and I, I usually get the tour names wrong. I just say the album that they were touring. I, on. Absolutely, me and too. I can't ever remember what the name of the. And most bands do just call that the name of the tour, but then you have some bands like you have it some other name, but they don't do that. I can't, can't keep up. That. I can't keep <laughs> up with that, man. Yeah, I'm with you. It's got to be the album they were they were behind. Yeah, I saw. Uh, REM, uh, when they were touring, I think the album was Around the Sun, but the tour had some other kind of name that yeah. was totally funky and something completely different. Like, y'all stop. It's Around the Sun, man. <laughs> yeah. I call it the Around the Sun tour. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. album, man. But I'm, oh, an, yeah. I'm an REM sucker. I like all their albums. So oh, it's, a, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, shows that I don't. They may have played a time or two after that, but I, I, I don't remember it. I, I want to say that might have been one of the last times it's, they played in Atlanta. It's pretty close to the end, man. Yeah, That's way, so at the, way at the back never, end, man. I can't say I ever saw them with uh, Bill Berry playing, but, you know, saw the, the, the two mics. <laughs> yeah, the two mics, yeah. man. Yeah. The two mics and Angry Feet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's what the DVDs are for, man. Their their live DVDs are actually quite good. My favorite one is the one that every, not everybody hates, but it's the one that gets crap talked about it. Um, I always get the names wrong. So we're going to do yeah. what we just did. We're going to talk about the albums that they were released after. Yeah. Uh, one was Green. It was like right when they signed with Warner Brothers. And so they were like, yeah, let's put a VHS out. It'll be cool. And eventually it's like there's tour film and road movie. And I think okay. it's tour film is that one. And then Road Movie is the one that not only is based off of Monster, but they filmed at Phillips Arena. So that's just oh, yeah, yeah, incredibly yeah. good. The thing about that one is that while, while you're in the, the YouTube and music mood, mm -hmm. if you're feeling that, uh, check out um, Country Feedback from the, I, I'm pretty sure it's Road Movie. I think it's it. Country Feedback, Road Movie, R.E.M. That is the most incredible version that I know. Perfect Square is the one they put on the greatest hits. Yeah. And it's good. But it ain't as good as the other one. And one of the reasons it's not as good is because one of the cool things about seeing the, like you said, when Bill's there, Bill wrote that song. Bill wrote the music. To, it's very interesting. Bill Barry wrote a lot of very, like, um, it's very strange. As great a bass player as Mike Mills is, a lot of R.E.M.'s tunes that are super bass heavy, Bill Barry wrote, God. like Man on the Moon. Yeah. Musically, that's his song. Now, lyrically, right. Michael writes everything. But I thought he was long gone at that point. Nah, man, he he was around through. I think Monster was the last one that okay. he was on, and oh, I'm sorry, New Adventures and Hi-Fi was the last okay. one he was on, and then I think that was the tour when he got sick, and then what the heck is the name of that? I want to say it's called Up, the one with the real light blue cover yeah, and it's the, Day Sleeper, the and all neon that. green and yeah, blue. man, yeah, that's a great that's album. Good. That's damn good. God, that's a day good album. The Day Sleeper, album. yeah, man, exactly, <laughs> the Day Sleeper album. Yeah. And, and freaking Sad Professor yeah. and uh, 
there's another one that's on there. Night, that's, night swimming. Night swimming was um. Oh, is that so automatic nice. for the people? I think. Okay. No. I always try to put that on up. In my in my head. Oh man, now I'm having a hard time remembering because I've got a different album cover stuck in my head now. But now I think automatic for the people was. Uh, what is wrong with me, man? I I can't believe I can't think of the name of that record. That might that might be right. I might just be confusing myself. But night swimming is on the. Um, Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight, uh, Drive, that album. Okay. I, I can't believe I'm messing this up, but it's that might be what it is. I, I think I'm confusing, too. I think I've got the album cover for New Adventures and Hi-Fi stuck in my head, mm -hmm. but Automatic is the one that I need. That's messed yeah. up, man. Yeah. I love REM, so I should be able to answer these questions. I'm, I'm terrible when it comes to that, because I can, I can convince myself that what I'm seeing in my head is... Right, it's just why I'm a terrible test taker. Is I don't convince myself that like, this is right. This is it. It's totally opposite. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I used to be really good at that stuff, and some things I still can't do. But I think the thing with REM is that when I did like the big call of CDs and just move stuff out, I quite literally kept every single REM album oh, I've got, yeah, which yeah. is all, I don't have all the live stuff, but all the basic studio stuff, and then the uh, the comp. I don't have ep eponymous because I have all the individual pre mm -hmm. Warner Brothers stuff, why do I need that? Yep. But I do have the um, the other greatest hits because the this whole the whole second <laughs> disc is like live stuff and outtakes mm -hmm. and it's great. And then the uh, Dead Letter Office got that one. It's awesome. It's basically just them doing a bunch of <laughs> Velvet Underground covers. It's yeah. kind of cool, man. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to stick by I can't I think of what it's called. Yes, yes, I'll take it back because I'm thinking of Out of Time. And Out of Time is Country Feedback, Losing My Religion. That's that. Mm -hmm. Texarkana, mm -hmm. that's that one. So, yes, Automatic for the People, I'm pretty confident. It's Drive. <laughs> um, what in the world? Why can't I think of this? Uh, Man of the Moon's the monstrous one off of there. I'm pretty sure that's right. The Night Swimming ends it. Uh, uh, everybody Hurts was on that one. I think so. I, I think that's, that's, I that's, think think I that's think. right, man. No, man I think I was, what, dude, what, when, you, when you say that one, that's what I think of. I was running channels the other day, and mm -hmm. Amy Farrah Fowler was playing the harp, and I was so that's hoping right. it was the Everybody Hurts one, oh, because yeah. it's one of my the single night. favorite <laughs> moments, the, the little wood block. <laughs> the fact that she gets the wood block, I died. <laughs> I absolutely died. I love that so much, because she just lets it hang there for a second, yeah. and then clacks the side of like, that is so good. Yeah. <clears throat> I, well, I'll, I'll wrap up with my story that I thought of when uh, I don't think we ever talked about when uh, talk about the uh, Adam's house cat. Uh, just it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sit down, record the album. It's gone. It's gone. Did, did you hear the, the story? What happened with White Snake a few months ago? No. Uh, David Coverdale. I, I assume he's still alive. <laughs> uh, sits down with the band. They sit down. They get this rocking return record recorded and how this happens in this day and time i don't know but they somebody hit f and delete and pro tools or something and the record's gone how how, how, how does that happen i get you know uh trying to hide the bastards in the 60s from the record company and you know things getting lost here and there in the shuffle and you know trying to go save stuff from the fire and something might get lost, but with, in this day and time, uh, yeah, back it up. I was just going, you didn't back, back that up. sucker up. Thumb drive, that's what I'm doing. telling you. <laughs> I smell a rap. It, it gets I talked think, about. Exactly. I think David mm -hmm. Coverdale misses, <laughs> the, I think he's tired of Catherine Hahn making mm -hmm. TV commercials, making fun <laughs> of his ex wife, or maybe they're still married. I don't even know. I doubt and it. He's like, I want to be, be relevant again. So let's record it. I think she moved on to Chuck Finley. I think Chuck Is Finley. Is that right? Yeah. Good for Chuck Finn. I don't know if they're still together. I, yeah, I don't know about that stuff. Yeah. Man. Um, <laughs> but in, anyway, Catherine Hahn. Yeah, I just, I just think that uh, I want to be talked about again. Let's record a new album, mm. but not. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's delete a new album. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good policy going forward. I've got this idea. We sit down and we record this. We tell people yeah. it's this kick ass rock and roll record. <laughs> Maybe it isn't. <laughs> I say we be bold. We record nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's supposedly a legit story. And, that's you know, awesome, why, man. You know, 
maybe you can just do it again. But that's hard. <laughs> it's going to change the world. It's great. But, it's the greatest album you've ever heard. It's like yeah. the Tenacious D greatest song in the world, man. <laughs> this isn't it. We couldn't remember it. But <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't remember what that sounded like. <laughs> For real. That was hard. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's up. Take it easy, y'all. Y'all be cool. Big Bailey gonna kill us.